On this Wednesday morning, we're very pleased to uh, spend some time with our 10th District Congressional Representative, uh, Congresswoman Lisa McLean, on the line with us right now. Lisa, good morning. Hey, good morning, Paul. How are you? Doing well. I appreciate you spending some time uh, with us this morning. You've been really busy, uh, th- and you knew that this was going to be a busy job. Did you have any idea <laughs> what uh, what it was going to be like? And, and what's what's the experience been like compared to the expectation? You know, it. Uh, I, I think the biggest advantage I have is I don't have anything to compare it to, so I think <laughs> that's a positive for me. Right, right. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's been a whirlwind. The past uh, uh, two months, uh, one six weeks, whatever, has been absolutely crazy. But I'll be honest with you, I I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm having I'm having fun, and and I feel it's a it's a slow process, but um, there's a lot of positive that can be had um, out of out of this process, um, and and that's what I hope to do. And yeah, it can only go get better from here. <laughs> well, we, we sure hope so. And I know the biggest thing that uh, Congress is working on right now is the COVID-19 relief package. What kind of relief package would you support, and how does that uh, compare to with uh, you know what uh, the uh, the Biden administration is uh, is trying to push through? Well, quite frankly, I'm on a different um, I'm on a different um, side of the aisle, so to speak, than the Biden package is I think we do need COVID relief, but my issue is money isn't solving the problem. We already have a, a, almost a trillion dollars from past COVID relief packages that we haven't spent. So providing more money on top of that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, especially with a $27 uh, trillion dollar national debt I'm more concerned long term on how are we going to repay these debts back when we haven't spent a trillion dollars that's already been allocated for it. So I would prefer, yes, we need COVID relief, but let's open up the state. Let's open up our economies. Let's focus on getting jobs in, in the economy and getting people back to work safely. That is, I think, a better long-term solution. You mentioned jobs. Uh, there's uh, one proposal out there that would uh, increase the uh, federal, the uh, minimum wage uh, to uh, fifteen uh, dollars. Should that be included in this uh, COVID package? The short answer is no, but let me explain why. And again, I think both sides want to have a fair um, and honest wage for the American people. So I think where we differ is how to accomplish that is I don't believe raising the minimum wage, especially right now with a lot of the businesses not even be able, being able to open at full capacity. Now we're going to mandate another $15, um, a mandate on, on already hurting businesses. My fear if we do that is they're, they're going to hire less people and the minimum jobs are going to go to automation. So when you go into McDonald's, you're not going to see three more employees at $15 an hour. You're going to see three more kiosks. So I, I don't think it makes sense, especially, you know, I've spent 30 plus years in business. I've actually had to sign the front of checks as well as uh, not just the back of checks. And I think we all want the same thing. We're just debating on how to get there. I, I, the policy is not going to work. It's not going to accomplish what we what we want it to accomplish. I, I know you had some concerns about uh, how PPE funds uh, were uh, handled here in uh, Michigan. In fact, you uh, uh, sent a letter to the uh, governor uh, uh, about yeah. that. Uh, you still have those uh, concerns? You know, um, I still have some of those concerns. But again, we're in we're coming off the uh, the heels of a, of a pandemic. And I think that we can learn a lot, right? I, I have a big belief in watching game films. And I think we have a lot to learn for get, from getting through this pandemic. So I, said, I would say the concerns are there. We just need to get a better process. In addition to the financial side of uh, COVID-19, there's uh, right now the need to get more people vaccinated uh, more quickly. Is there anything that can be done uh, to help get more vaccine into arms? Well, I think there's two way, two things that we can think about. Is Number one, we have over a, th- a thousand National Guard troops at the Capitol, protecting the Capitol from Michigan. 
I, I would be willing to bring those be- those guards back and help in the distribution process of the vaccine. But also, number two, what I think is there are states that are doing better than we are. Let's ask those states and meet with those states that are doing a good job and learn from them. So what are you doing that we're not? Because there are states that are doing a good job of distributing the vaccine. It's, it's not, let's learn from it and take what we learn and apply it back here in our state. Do you think that it could be that states, <laughs> some states are getting more vaccine than we're getting at this point, though? But that, that could be part of the problem, but mm-hmm. also the problem is the distribution of the vaccine. So we have two issues. One is we need to get more, but, and then also we need to do a better job of distribution. Uh, you've talked a lot about uh, getting kids uh, back in the classroom, getting kids back to school. Um, is that something that uh, should be mandated at the uh, federal level? I know it's something that uh, every state and every school district is grappling with right now. Uh, what do we need to do to get kids uh, back in school, uh, and, and can we do that safely? Well, I, I think that's more of a state issue, but in my, you know, I believe in, in states running the state. I don't, I think, uh, I think that's very important. And there again, I would say we have to get our kids back in school or we are going to lose an entire generation. In-person learning is critical. And again, what I would look at is there are schools out there and there are states out there that have their, their children back in school and they have them in school safely. So what's the harm in saying, hey, you're doing something right. We're lagging behind. Help me. Teach me. We're talking Tell me with, what we can do better. Yeah. No, we're talking with Congresswoman uh, Lisa McLean uh, right now. Uh, so many things uh, have happened in the last six weeks, so much for us to talk about. <laughs> uh, you and I haven't talked since the um, uh, since the riots on January 6th. I think we talked maybe a day uh, before uh, that, that occurred. But I want to talk a little bit about that, about your vote against certification of the, of the election uh, results. You voted against that. Um, take us back to that day. Take us back to that vote. Have you had any uh, second thoughts about about casting your vote that way? I have not, not at all. Um, I I I think I was a voice for the people, and, and I think it, it was imperative that we have fair elections and that people feel that their voices are heard. Um, I mean, it's two months later. I will say that. Um, although I'm not happy with, uh, I wish my, my team would have won. I wish Donald Trump would have been president. He's not. We went through the entire process, and Biden is the president. I've accepted that fact. Don't, I wish it was different. But it's time to move forward, and it's time to focus on issues that we can get done for our communities, for our state, and for our nation. What was your January 6th like? Tell us what that experience was like in the Capitol. <laughs> well, and, and I'm not making light of the situation at all, but I was on the floor um, debating and listening to debates. I really had no idea what was going on yeah. in, in around me. Of course. Until the Capitol Police came in and they first escorted. You, you could tell something was happening. They escorted Nancy Pelosi out, but... I'll share with you my hat off to the Capitol Police and all the law enforcement because they got us out of that room. I wish I could give you a time frame. It seemed like in a, in a snap of a finger into safety relatively quickly. So I, I, I think the biggest fear that I had was I didn't know what was going on. So the fear of not knowing was scary to me. Um, but once I knew in the Capitol Police were there, I'll tell you, I felt safe. In fact, my thought was, I'm going to stay and sleep in my office that night as opposed to going back to my hotel. Um, It's just sad. It's just sad. The impeachment trial going on in the Senate right now is trying to uh, place the blame for that uh, on uh, Donald Trump. Who do you think was responsible for, for the riot on January 6th? Well, Paul, I think individuals are responsible for their actions. I don't believe in this mob mentality. And I think any act of violence, any act of violence, needs to be dealt with swiftly and justly. 
we are we are better than this and we can disagree and not be disagreeable and not be violent i try and you know it, we were even talking about this earlier with the minimum wage i believe we all want people to have a good minimum wage we're just we just have a different vehicle to get there i believe we all think america is the greatest country in the world or we wouldn't be here right no but we wouldn't have an immigration issue right there's way more people trying to get into the country than out let's start from a premise of togetherness and positivity and let's start with what we agree on instead of tearing each other down well, there's been an awful lot of that uh, for sure. Um, uh, take uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, uh, being stripped of her uh, committee assignments. Uh, do you think that was appropriate? My theme for this, if I could get one thing across to the listeners, to the American people, is if it wasn't for double standards, we'd have no standards at all. And what I mean by that is what Marjorie Taylor Greene did prior to her be- becoming a congresswoman and, and what she wrote on those tweets was unacceptable, completely unacceptable. But if we have a baseball game, both teams get three strikes and they're out. So to me, where's Eric Swalwell, who while he was a sitting member of Congress on the Intelligence Committee who had an extramarital affair with a Chinese spy, shouldn't we have the same standards? Neither one of those are right. And to me, it's the the people who elected these people. This is our responsibility as as voters to get them out. It's a very slippery slope when Congress tries to determine what, what committee seats people have. So all I would say is Marjorie Taylor Greene, Eric Swalwell. Let's just have the same standard. Your uh, committee assignment is Armed Services. Tell us a little bit about uh, being on the Armed Services Committee. I am extremely excited and humbled and privileged to be on that, on, on that committee. Um, what, what I'm most excited about on that committee is it truly is a bipartisan, I think, committee where we want to put the American people first, the safety and security of our homeland first. And it's extremely exciting for me, especially with the the Salfridge Air National Guard, especially with the Defense Corridor. I think there's a lot of positive things that we can do for our district and our state being on armed services. And that I'm so excited to get to work on. Uh, finally, real quick, before we let you go, there, there is a, a crisis happening in your district, in the 10th District, and that's along the St. Clair River, some major flooding. We've got an awful lot of ice out there. Any federal help uh, available for, uh, for, for the folks who are impacted by that? That is top of priority. And last week while I was in D.C., people from the district were actually sending me photos of the ice. And about an hour later, I had a meeting with the Coast Guard, and I actually pulled my phone up and showed them the pictures and said, hey, we need some relief, and we need some relief now. Um, and, we, and they were able to send, I think, two additional cutters up there to do that, which is a short-term fix. I think the real long-term fix, as, as I'm exploring it, is we need to get a reliable cutter up there because it's a, a old and and um, kind of worn out uh, ship, let's say. So you can better believe that that's the one top of my list is to get a new, uh, new ship and better resources and bring home those resources for my district because I was up there this weekend and they desperately need it. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess. It's a bad, bad uh, situation. And those, and... Are the things, those are the things that make you feel good. Like this is why I went to Congress is to help the folks in the, in the people of my district. That, that makes me feel like everything that I've gone through the past six weeks is all worth it. A lot of work to be done, no doubt about it. And uh, a lot of people uh, back here in the 10th that, uh, that need things like, uh, you know, those, uh, those resources. So uh, we appreciate that. Uh, and we appreciate your time this morning. I know it's uh, precious. There's an awful lot going on there. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a few minutes this morning, Lisa.